Hello, and welcome back to The Future Of. Uh, today's episode is all about the future of AI. I'm here today talking with Steve Lowry, who is very much connected to the um, what's happening in uh, artificial intelligence here on the West Coast in British Columbia. Um, and uh, you know what, I, in some ways, Steve is a guy who needs no introduction, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let him do the honor actually of introducing himself because he'll do a much better job. Go ahead. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, so uh, Executive Director of AI and BC is my title. And uh, what does that mean? Well, uh, working with the Industry Body for Artificial Intelligence in the province of BC, um, we work with you know, a variety of companies, um, academic institutions, and government to sort of you know, catalyze the efforts of, of people who are working in the space um, with the goal of, of really driving BC's economy ahead with, with artificial intelligence and you know, related technologies. Very good, very good. So we wanted to talk about the future of AI. Um, before we can talk about the future, we have to talk about really where it's at. Um, and the West Coast is definitely a big driver of these emerging technologies. AI is a big buzzword, but maybe you can tell me about what is actually happening on, on this scene? Hmm. Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, the unique thing about AI is it's a really, it's a horizontal technology. So it really spans across a lot of different industries. Um, so in a way there is a lot happening. It's not like, you know, you need a particular, uh, you know, research center to come together to, you know, create a piece of equipment to go do it. You know, um, it's dissimilar perhaps from some quantum uh, computing technologies, which are you know big on the the resources side and and uh, the physics side of things, AI can be done you know on any computer anywhere. And so you know what we're seeing is is to say every industry we're seeing a lot of uh, traction in health. Uh, obviously, with all the things happening with COVID, there's a, there's a ton of stuff going on there. We can talk about. Um, you know, we've got you know a number of companies in fintech. Uh, despite Vancouver not being a huge finance center, there's still a lot of you know, so many potential applications in that that you see a lot of activity there. Uh, cybersecurity, that's the area when we looked at our um, across our uh, database of BC companies in AI, the one that's growing the fastest from what we determined. So, um, you know, sort of you pick a pick a sector and there's there's activity. Well, let's pick a sector right now uh, and, and delve in a little bit deeper. So, uh, and we can talk about individual companies. We can talk about in, uh, technologies uh, or, or just go sort of big picture, however you want to do this. Um, but uh, I was thinking you mentioned health tech. And so I, I think for a lot of people, um, uh, we want to know how AI actually delivers results in different industries. So lowers cost or makes things more efficient, makes things faster. Um, so in the, on the health tech scene, and just because, yeah, COVID is the big story these days, but it doesn't necessarily need to tie into that. Um, how does AI help um, with whether it's patient outcomes, lowering costs for hospitals? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, it does all those things, absolutely. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's just as a topical on COVID. Uh, you know, we recently sent out just um, uh, a request to our user base, uh, this is AI companies and, and researchers across BC, and said, hey, what are you doing about uh, the pandemic? And uh, got a lot of it really interesting replies back. Um, you know, so some of, the, some of the ones that come to mind for me are, um, you know, drug discovery. Um, so the traditional route to doing um, drug discovery was, you know, we've got a drug that we know it does a certain thing and we can sort of play around a little to the left, a little to the right, uh, and, you know, see what happens, uh, you know, a lot of shots in the dark effectively. Um, but artificial intelligence enables you to, you know, expose almost the whole universe of molecule combinations and there's almost infinite number of, of combinations, right? But to be able to, you know, sequence, you know, basically take what, um, you know, chemists are doing uh, in their, their drug discovery and you simulate that digitally and then play with it, you know, in multiple different, you know, throw all sorts of different cycles at it and iterations. Um, you get a lot of uh, potential use, useful compounds a lot faster. Um, so basically it accelerates the speed of drug discovery when you're in a pandemic, of course, mm. uh, trying to find drugs as fast as you can, um, you know, so we can restart the economy you know, is, is crucial, right? So we've seen concrete examples of that, you know, prior to the pandemic, companies that, you know, were, were you know, the drug discovery process, to, you know, it's going to take, 
call it three years, they may shorten six months off the front of that. And by do using AI to kind of jump some, you know, through some of the steps that otherwise would have taken a lot more chemistry experiments. And, right, uh, right. So, so I, I think that's a, a great example because it highlights um, that AI is not, it's not about a robot replacing human beings. Um, this is about essentially, um, giving ourselves a new level of computing power to yes. um, analyze data much faster and in ways maybe we wouldn't have uh, thought of to recognize patterns that are there and yeah. uh, ultimately put that data into um, a, a meaningful uh, set that smart people can look at and use to make better, faster decisions that save lives with, let's say, uh, faster drug discoveries, uh, better, uh, better targeted drugs, maybe gene therapies, that kind of thing. So I think that's a really interesting example. Um, was there a particular um, company you wanted to uh, maybe mention at, at this time that, that's doing that kind of work? Yeah, and there's a couple in the province. Uh, Absalera is a, a sizable company that, that's partnered with Eli Lilly on COVID in particular. Um, they're working with antibodies. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, there's been some news they've released on that. Um, also another startup um, that we've done some work with, uh, variational AI. They do do that as well, um, taking principles that work for molecule discovery in you know compounds relating to uh, you know say creating plastics. You can apply some of the same um, methodologies to to drugs as well. So they're uh, actually have a recent uh, supercluster project was was funded by the Chemist Digital Technology Supercluster mm. um, to to find you know drugs to basically find existing drugs um, that can be used effectively to fight COVID. Um, mm. Mm. Yeah. So. It's, yeah, certainly a lot. And, and to one of your points there, it's, you know, recognizing things that, you know, humans might not be able to see. Just, there's so much data that you just couldn't process it. So it's, it's more of like these patterns that emerge that, um, you know, you just wouldn't be able to find it with a human eye type of thing. So that's an example. But yeah, there's a number of other health, health approaches where it's, it, even it is things that you would be able to recognize, uh, you know, doing the work that uh, specialists do, but helping them, augmenting it too. So and just, I'll give you one more example from, from health. Um, Change Healthcare is a BC company. Well, it's a large US company, but they have a, a sizable BC office and they um, do medical imaging. And so they've recently created a tool that uh, will review uh, brain scans and just flag for the radiologist, uh, those that have a brain bleed, for example, sort of an immediate kind of acute problem that needs to be solved quickly. So instead of these, you know, images going into a pile that gets reviewed hours or maybe days later, um, you know, it's still going to go to the radiologist. The human being still has to be there. There's that human in the loop is, is the terminology is often used. Um, but what it is, is it's finding the ones that need to be looked at right now and getting into those people, the radiologist immediately just to, to help the patient that, you know, potentially has a, a bleed. So mm. a different, different, you know, a range of spectrum in terms of where AI can help. Very good. Very good. So, this is um, an interesting foundation to talk about what uh, AI is actually doing right now. It's kind of like the future is already here. Um, certainly, you know, yeah. Um, when we talked about artificial intelligence, robots, uh, uh, computers, you know, when um, when I was a kid back in the in the Stone Age. <laughs> you, you, yeah. same as me but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah this uh i mean these kinds of capabilities were uh yeah we, we are really living in already in the future uh in, sure. in in that sense and and then um i think you know we should probably give uh one more um you know let, let, let's delve into one more area because we, we focused on health uh, I'll let you choose uh, fintech or what was the other what was the other category we we discussed? Yeah, cybersecurity um, yeah. is one. So I mean, you know, fintech's an, uh, an easy mm -hmm. one to, to to speak to. Um, sure. We work, you know, we've done some work pretty closely with uh, Fin AI. They're another Vancouver company mm. um, with some you know great traction and growth around um, basically bots for banks when you, when you break it down, which actually funnily enough is also useful in, in a pandemic in the sense that it's hard to keep um, call centers fully staffed. I know I tried to call my bank recently and after about 45 minutes, I got the message back saying, um, sorry, we can't help you, click, goodbye. 
<laughs> so it actually would have been helpful if there is an AI uh, assistant maybe to, to, to guide me through. But that's, you know, fundamentally what they do. Not, not so much voice, I think, yet anyway, but it's a lot of sort of a chat assistance or a chat bot on um, the white label or technology. So a variety of financial institutions can use their technology. Um, and they just have this large data set around uh, financial customers' needs. So it's mm. you know, languages customized to, it's almost like there's different dialects in, in language. If you sort of think of consumers have a dialect of how they use language, for, or sort of banking consumers have a dialect as to how they use language, whereas, um, I don't know, people buying running shoes are gonna use the English language or other languages for that matter differently. And so training around those um, dialects is, is where you can get a real competitive advantage. And so they were, Finn has been early on in terms of understanding uh, bank customers' needs and have you know, created this large sort of body of data around that that they can then leverage in a lot of different cases. Um, and that's, you know, mm -hmm. I think, as exciting as for BC companies because, um, you know, it gives you sort of a competitive advantage. If you get this data lead over others and it, you know, it accrues faster, right? The more data you have, the faster you can improve the data, you, know, you get more customers draw to your solution, et cetera, et cetera. So it's sort of a self kind of replicating um, pattern. And so, the, you know, really exciting what, where those guys are positioned with, with that lead in, in the financial data. Yeah, yeah. I was really interested to hear that example. I, actually, I think it came up during that uh, AI conference uh, that was sort of the last event I went to before the world ended. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, funny, it wasn't Terminators yeah. ending the world. Curious. Yeah. yeah it was. <laughs> anyway, you went quite wrong. We should have been to the health conference if you really wanted to get your money's worth. But yeah, just me. <laughs> um, yeah, I and the reason I found it interesting, I mean, partly it's because I'm a, I'm a communications guy. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think even eight or 10 years ago, I was looking at um, machine learning algorithms that could put together a sports story uh, just based off statistics and, you know, how many runs, how many, uh, yeah. how many strikes, and it could put together a perfectly, um, Perfect, perfectly fine sports reporting story based off a baseball game. And this right. was like eight years ago. And, <laughs> yeah. and um, so today we've got, um, you know, I, I, I think, yeah, as a professional communicator, I was, you know, a little bit worried about getting put out of a job by the robots. And uh, mm -hmm. so as, as you say, that it's not like there's one algorithm to rule them all. Like we, we get speech, uh, yeah. And, you know, one chat bot uh, uh, that's trained up and now it's like working in every bank, every company, every niche. No, th this has to be very much, um, uh, the AI has to learn for every every industry, every, every type of absolutely. No, absolutely. out there. Yeah. Um, and, and this is um, one last point that I want to, I don't want this to, you know, drag on for an hour. So, uh, um I, I just want to bring up one last point was the um, uh, about the replacement of human beings is uh, a long way off uh, uh, from yeah. AI because um, the you know as as um, chatbots for instance take up that niche and, and of course there's many other uh, uh, types of uh, y use cases for AI out there. But let's say as chatbots take up the jobs that maybe would have um, been used by, uh, or, or jobs that would have been held by uh, people in a call center, for instance, um, people are uh, you know, able to work on higher level things. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, did you want to speak to that a little bit? Well, I think jobs move around a bit. Um, mm -hmm. So just taking a call center example. Um, okay, so maybe you have a little bit of, you know, less time of human beings, you know, talking through some of the basics of an account, right? Like an AI gets some essential kind of basic things that you just, you know, well, it's most of my balance today, like, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Um, but then where the AI becomes quite powerful for that financial institution is, you know, summing up, you know, by forcing, um, you know, people or, or leading people, I should say, through these kind of channels to you know communicate with the bots. That becomes an easy data set to pull information from and to draw you know abstract you know conclusions about what consumers' needs are, so that you can create better financial products to service them. Um, so as you you know, you're suddenly getting a way better picture instead of trying to go around and talk to all your you know call center employees and ask, well, hey, what are you hearing this week? Type of thing. You know, they where Finn is is really getting you know raising some eyebrows with their customers is by being able to you know pull those insights out. And there's just so much more that you know that the companies can do. So just to take an analogy back to 
you know, back to the, the stone age, if you want to put it back to the eighties when they created, um, uh, spreadsheets and, uh, you know, spreadsheet technology, right? I think it was Lotus one, two, three or whatnot were the early ones and bookkeepers feared for their jobs at that time. They're like, Oh, I guess there will never be another bookkeeper. We'll be you know, immediately out of work. Um, because the spreadsheet thing does what we more or less have been doing on paper. Right. Mm. Um, but turns out, um, we still have bookkeepers today and businesses just simply got smarter as a result of using these technologies that people that work in finance could retrain a bit and start drawing conclusions out of the data that otherwise just didn't have time or the wherewithal or whatnot to go and do. So mm. these banks maybe don't have as many call center people, but people can train around, you know, how to you know create better products. So maybe they, they're hiring more on the product side to, um, you know, to really stand out and, and to market their services for that matter so the marketing side of things so it's uh less around just a sort of a shift around labors with the results of of you know creating better services and, and a more efficient market at the end of the day so um, totally yeah well steve it has been a pleasure i guess um yeah my last question uh is really a free for all it's um you know based on anything we've, we've been dis discussing today what uh do you see as um uh, the future of AI for good or, or bad uh, or just interesting uh, over the next, um, over the short term, medium term, long term. Um, what, um, what is very interesting to you that maybe others aren't talking about? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, good question. You know, I think um, the future of AI really depends a fair bit on the future of data. So um, our companies, you know, there's, there's this very powerful technology that exists and uh, Yashua Benjua is one of the you know, kind of leading lights in this area out of, out of Montreal. Um, you know, one of the early sort of thinkers around um, um, the deep learning, machine learning. And he said, you know, even today, and so he himself is a researcher, but he says even today we've got the technology that we're going to still be taking 10 years to go and, and, you know, gain the benefits from. We don't actually need to develop new algorithms today because there's so much already figured out. And, you know, keep in mind this, this AI has been around since, you know, they call it the 80s or 90s. These, these theories have been there that they just haven't had the computers that had the power to actually execute on them. So, um, you know, we have that technology now. It's just a question of getting into the companies. And so if companies are smart about their data, um, then they can deploy, you know, take these things that are almost off the shelf data. You know, of course, my, uh, Google and others, Microsoft have these, um, you know, tools in the cloud you can plug into that already have um, a whole bunch of intelligence built into them. It's just a question of just, you know, how do you organize data to, to make it effective and you hire the right people that, that know how to do the right things with it and you have the right privacy concerns around this, right? So I think, um, you know, the, the future of a lot of this is around you know, the, the free flow of data. And so that's maybe not, you know, the, I think that's widely known, not necessarily something I'm seeing in particular, but that's where we're focusing a lot with, with AI and BC right now is working with government to say, you know, are there ways that we can leverage health data better? So for a pandemic or whatnot, you know, mm -hmm. can we, uh, free up data so that, you know, maybe adding controls on it. So if you want to remove your data from the data set, you as a citizen in BC, you can, but if you want it in the data set to help, um, you know, solve for diseases or, or otherwise, like let that be there. So, um, right. It, it's, it's that interesting intersection of, of private and public data and, and how we can use that um, with more of an opt-in uh, kind of a strategy as opposed to just the right. government sucking up all the data, whether you like it or not and playing around with it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so that's interesting. Okay. Well, it's been an interesting conversation. Um, how would, uh, how would someone who is interested in learning more about AI and BC, uh, get a hold, get a hold of you? Uh, what, uh, uh, or what, what's, what's the best place to, to find information <laughs> sure. about AI and BC? Yeah, I mean, the website is AINBC.ai, good starting spot. Um, but also a little initiative I'd like to share that I think a lot of companies could benefit from is called Athena Pathways. And we are uh, working with a consortium of, of 10 other partners, uh, four of them being universities, a number of companies, to we're training 500 women in AI. So if anyone, uh, you know, there's a, there is a gender imbalance quite clearly noted in, in tech and in AI. And so if there's any women interested to look at a new avenue in their career, I really encourage them to check out athenapathways.org. Um, there are, you know, university course uh, opportunities with scholarships attached as well. Uh, we've got government funding on this and uh, a ton of inter internships will be coming online and other jobs as well. So it's early days with it, but pretty exciting mm -hmm. initiative. And so I'd highly recommend people to, to go and uh, take a look. Well, those are some exciting opportunities in STEM at a time when people are in dire need of opportunities. So thanks for that. that that's great, Steve. <laughs>
All right, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. And uh, you've been listening to The Future Of with Jonathan Narvey and Steve Lowry. Thanks for Have having me. Have a great day. All right. Take care.